This episode is brought to you by Hub24, whose purpose is to connect advisors to innovative solutions that create opportunity. They're massive supporters of advisors, in particular those going solo, uh, and they're one of the early players in the managed account space, and, and their epic functionality in that area, as well as their commitment to user experience, has led them to become a market leader in terms of advisor satisfaction. I can speak from personal experience when I say their BDM team are total legends, and they're there to help you work through the best solutions for your business. So you can check out more information at hub24.com.au. This episode is also brought to you by Centuria, who are a boutique ultra high performing fund manager. They've won pretty much all the awards there are to win. Uh, They've got a bunch of five star rated funds and they're heavy into technical support for advisors around their products and strategies. On top of that, they're just an awesome group of people and they've got a dedicated team there to support you. And if you haven't already spoken to the guys at Centuria and heard about what they do, do yourself a favor and reach out. G'day, g'day, and how's it going? What do you know? Strike a light. Baron, what's up? <laughs> it's happening, Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Super, like, uh, natural there. Um, mate, um, tell us a little bit about uh, this Latvian pool shark business. So, so we've been mates for a little while, but I didn't know this about you uh, up until literally the other day. So... What's going on? Is this a secondary income source for you? Is it is it white man can't shoot? Like, what's what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> no, this is a little secret that I kind of just keep keep on the back burner. Yeah. Just pull it out at random times, you know. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah, yeah. I mean, to all the Latvian folk out there, you know, and I'm sure there are many of you oh, yeah. listening. Massive community. Um, yeah, I play or used to play a little little Latvian game uh, of similar uh, similar to snooker called Novus. Novus. And uh, yeah, I used to play with my grandfather. So very cool. Uh, yeah, he was the uh, the Latvian Australian uh, sports president. What? Um, so as the eldest grandson, I had to represent, <laughs> yeah. and that meant in uh, in in all sports as well. So uh, <laughs> basketball, so basketball, swimming, mm. athletics, mm. Um, and uh, Novus. So I got dragged into that somehow as well. Nice. But um, no, nah, to be honest, I was just playing against a, a bunch of uh, geriatrics and uh, <laughs> I, I was the only one who had some good eyesight at the time. The so. only one without the shakes. That's it. That's <laughs> it. But they, they were actually quite good yeah, with the right. shakes so as well. So how does it differ from, say, snooker? So snooker, so this one you play on, on a square uh, wooden board. Mm. So ah. po- pockets in each, each hole, uh, okay. in each hole, in each corner. Mm-hmm. Um, and you play with wooden pucks. Wooden pucks? Wooden pucks. That's so you right. get us and you hit wooden pucks. And so you hit a big wooden puck yeah. onto a bunch of eight little wooden pucks that are lined up on the opposite on the opposite right. uh, wall. Yes. And uh, and you've got to sink all those little wooden pucks. Now it's it seems easy when you look at it. <laughs> but there's uh, yeah, there's 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 a lot of uh, intricacies involved with this. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Is it kind of like uh, air hockey? Like that hitting that puck around? Similar. Yeah, similar. Right. Yeah, similar vibe. Yeah. Pool slash air hockey. That's it. Man, what a what, That's and, it. And well, novus. Novus. So this might be the next this might be the next big thing, right? We can incorporate air hockey and Novus together. We get the tables with the little air blowers going in. Hell yes. And uh, yeah. Dude. Something interesting I learned about Latvia the other day, it's they've got a uh, crazy uh, height, average height, right? Mm. Like out mm. of all of the the, the of Europe or something. It's like the h- tallest people of Europe or whatever. Yeah, the, well, the, especially the women. Uh, I believe the the women are the tallest in yeah, Europe. Right. So my wife is is Latvian as well, yes. Latvian Australian. Didn't intentionally <laughs> go out to meet a Latvian girl, as you know, um, just so happened. Um, but uh, she's six foot, um, wow. and that's I think that's pretty much the average. So, yeah, wow. yeah, crazy man. Um, and, and so we met a handful of years ago now. We sort of almost started our financial planning careers around about the same time, give or take. Um, and you, you've, you've had a pretty cool journey, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, being qualified education-wise and, and you had quite a bit, a bit of experience in finance before you came across to financial planning. Um, and then you, two, three years ago, I guess, would have started your company. Yeah, Stick two and a half. Yep. Yeah. Um, so 
there's, there's a lot to unpack here and I think it's really topical because you, everyone's got a unique story um, and I think everyone can uh, learn from someone like yourself uh, as far as what the history, how did you get here, challenges and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So why don't we start right at the beginning, so to speak. So post Novus. Right, so so uh, so you win you yeah. win the title two thousand eleven. Got, got you retire. Retire on top. That's it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you, Made you, my name. Made yeah. my dollars. You you you're, <laughs> you never have to work again. That's it. Grandfather is super happy. Financial planning is 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 the move forward for a relaxing life. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. So tell us how how did you decide to get into financial planning or, and and what were you doing prior? Let, let's sort of kick off the um the genesis of of the financial planning. Sure, sure. So, look, I've had a uh, a very tumultuous uh, job history. <laughs> um, look, out of out of school, and I'm sorry, guys. How long have we got today? <laughs> Go, um, keep going. I was in IT. Yeah. Uh, so I had an IT business back in my early twenties. Right. Had that run that for a number of years. Right. Uh, so that's kind of what gave me that entrepreneurial cool. uh, element. Um, but uh, I was very good technically. Uh, but needed some help in the sales side of things. So uh, one of my clients at the time was the CEO of a uh, of a biodiesel startup, and he was like, Whoa. "Hey, why don't you come and work for me? Do your business on the side and learn sales." Whoa. And uh, I don't know whether the people watching this video can see, but I have some grey hairs running down the side of my head that I call <laughs> speed streaks. Um, this is what gave me those speed streaks. Oh, so really? I was in sales for a couple of years for in petroleum. Wow. Um, That's that, a weird that sidestep, man. Really, really <laughs> weird this tangent. this IT really weird tangent. entrepreneur yep. and then oh, I'm going to go sell petrol. Yep. That's so weird. Yep. Yeah, and it's in startup land as well, so it was renewables. What? Uh, so that was that was a, a very interesting journey, um, but it was a number of years without, without much sleep. Um, wow. I then had the opportunity to uh, – well, I, I jumped out of the industry. It just wasn't for me. Mm. Um, highly, uh, for those in the petroleum industry, I, I don't think there are many listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's slightly unethical in, in many regards. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, if you hadn't that? guessed, uh, look, I mean, we're, we're digging things up out of the ground yes. uh, to start with. Secondly, mm. the uh, – the, 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 the players in the industry uh, do things to get business. Would you call that, them uh, cowboys? Would maybe. That be an, a, yeah, an appropriate cowboys term? might be an, appro right. an appropriate term. Um, so from there, I had the opportunity to jump into Telstra uh, as a okay. sales manager. So right. I was there for a number of years. And so that, look, that allowed me to leverage my technical skills, mm. my newfound sales skills, and move into more of a corporate world, which is where I thought I wanted to go at yeah, that right. stage. Yep. Um, so while I was there, the logical next step for me, because I didn't have a uni background and to get ahead in the, in the corporate world, it was about go back to uni, get a degree, prove myself in that regard. So I went back to uni, did an MBA. Mm. Um, but while I, was at my, while I was doing that, I had the chance to reevaluate where I was going and what I was doing, as many people do. And, uh, and that world was finance. And so... I never actually intended on going out to become a financial planner, mm. but I saw great opportunity in the industry. Yeah. Right. Pretty typical um, story, right? No one absolutely. really sets out to become a financial planner and then you do all these jobs and then you hear about this, oh, what is this over here? And, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and so, look, from there I went to work for a um, – so I started again. Um, in terms of jobs and uh, went to work for a, a boutique uh, financial advice firm in the city. Um, so starting doing administration, started doing a little bit of power planning um, and and as a BDM as well. All right. Um, so How does that work, a BDM? Uh, well, the, the, the ultimate goal was for me to essentially just bring in Go out, do seminars, bring in business. Right. Um, so it's a little bit of a jack of all trades in in in, in this business. Great experience. Um, great experience. Yeah. Great exposure. Mm. Allowed me to see what um, what was you know what the industry was about yeah. and how the businesses were run. Yeah. Um, and so what during that experience, what I noticed was that uh, look, 
the financial planners uh, were great financial planners. They were very, very good at what they did, but they weren't running a very good business. Um, and that entrepreneurial element of, of my mind came back into play and I thought, well, hey, look, I can do this. Mm. Uh, and then this was around the time that I actually met yourself. Mm. Um, so we, we caught up and you told me about the path that you had gone down uh, with AMP and Horizons. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and I investigated that and that just seemed like a, a perfect segue into A, starting my own business and B, um, getting into financial planning. It's a crazy thing, and I don't think AMP Horizons exists anymore. Certainly not in the way that we not, did it. Not in the form that we did it, no. Yeah, and it makes sense. It was it was uh, skilling up all these people, and then they all just ran off and did their own thing, and it didn't yeah. really yeah. benefit AMP at all. I, re- I remember after a year when you, you know, quote-unquote, graduate or whatever, after your 12 months stint, I remember saying, I was like, I still don't get why this program <laughs> exists. You're paying us, not a, not a lot of money, but nonetheless, like you're paying us to skill us up, yep. to do whatever, however we we choose to use this. Yeah. Um, there's absolutely no guarantee for AMP that this is going to no be profitable. No guarantee at all. Um, and it was, it was a, a phenomenal, I think, um, for anyone that got a chance to do it. And then ended up actually using it. I think it was a brilliant uh, sort of accelerant to go from one trajectory to another. Oh, it was <laughs> it was uh, an absolutely phenomenal experience. I've got mm-hmm. to say, uh, kudos to AMP for putting the, the absolutely the, for putting it on. But I happen to agree with you because they they pay they'd pay you they'd upskill you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think I heard somewhere along the line that they relied on a statistic that so- something like 70% of people would actually make their yeah. way back into the network at some point in time. Oh. So that so the ROI was was in effect there, but that was a loose that was a loose call I think. I, I would say having now seen a lot of people do it over 6 years or whenever I did it. Um, I would say the statistics are a lot lower than uh, than 70%. But, you know, to to AMP's credit, they, they did an industry, the industry, a really good job. So I take my hat off them for that. Absolutely. But as far as it being a great ROI for them, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So, look, that was, uh, I saw that as uh, the doorway into the industry for myself mm. rather than I investigated going the, the traditional path which was that admin, para planning, associate planner element. Which you'd already been doing. Which I'd already kind of been doing, but um, to be honest, the reason that I got into financial planning industry was not to become a financial planner. It was because I saw a great business opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so underlying everything, as much as I've become a financial planner and I do enjoy it, um, the business is my focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because anyone that's entrepreneurially minded I think financial planning is the, the business model is that you know to, to an extent that it's almost like launching a, a business with training wheels on I think the chances of success would be infinitely higher for financial planners starting in business than uh, than not in financial planning right in the IT business for example I think there would be the and if you think about it oh unless Basically, financial planning is to the, to the extent that if some, unless someone leaves the industry by choice, it's quite hard to not do relatively well. I mean, I mean, it's even if it. I'm not talking about in one year, but certainly, like if you if you have a career in ten years in financial planning, it's almost impossible that you'll ever struggle ever. I think. Well, I think that's a big call. <laughs> <laughs> the attrition rates are relatively high, but yes, I think that's the look. That's the thing is that if you can stick it, it, it out at, at that base level, it is a game of attrition, right? Definitely. If you can stick it out, you inherit clients. You, mm. you know, you 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 simply grow organically. But now, yeah. but you. That can take a long time. It can take a long time. I'm not saying everyone's walking out the door and becoming millionaires, but what I'm saying is it, it, your chances of success with the reoccurring business model, or with the recurring revenue, sorry, business model, uh, it's almost the golden, the holy grail 
of business models as far as reoccurring revenue is concerned. You, you, I mean, you talk to any, like a plumber, or you talk to a consultant, or you talk to um, a greengrocer, an IT guy, right? Any other business doesn't have a model of reoccurring revenue. Ah, well, look, true. And th- this, is, this is the fundamental model that we've grown up with, right? Yeah. Um, so... But ultimately, it all comes down to how you build your business and Absolutely. the model that comes behind that. So, totally. you know, and this is where uh, we've got a bunch of uh, young people out there now trying to challenge that concept. Um, mm. You know, look at the, the, the basic um, revenue model, fee for service. We're getting away from commissions. We're yep. we're th- we're trying to drive the the transactional element out um, yep. and build a long term. Um, revenue source in, yes at the moment so yeah I mean it's, it's I'm very excited to see where things are going with this industry I mean, obviously we've got a long a lot of challenges ahead of us mm. um, and it's a very volatile environment mm. um, and that see I mean that's what's driving people out as well is just simply you know you've got a one-man band you're trying to do everything you possibly can yourself yeah um, and this has been my challenge up until recently. Um, we've all got our strengths, right? So my strength is sitting in front of people. I love doing this all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate paperwork. But 95% <laughs> of my time last year was spent in front of the computer. <clears throat> yeah. You know, um, and I'm sure a lot of people can, uh, can relate. relate to that. Definitely. Mm, so, yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it, it is a great industry to be in. Definitely. And so... Uh, Graduate, graduate from Horizons. Yes. Uh, and then you, I know you started your business straight away. Yeah. And then there was a little bit of a, a time when you were thinking about pulling in different things. And I know you've gone through a few uh, different iterations of, of, of your business model. Um, but first of all, let's talk about the name. Yes. I love the I'm a massive fan of the name <laughs> of, of, of the... Uh, of the philosophy that you have. And I know that that's become refined over time. Yep. So uh, what's your business called? Yeah, so my business is called Stickman Wealth Management. Uh, look, got to admit, Stickman, not exactly that, uh, that original. Yeah. But uh, in saying that, a little bit of a strategic approach, it, it differentiates somewhat to uh, a majority of business names within the financial planning industry. Yeah. Right, uh, and Mine that's Hill Ross Silverstone. Oh, very, very wealth uh, design. <laughs> 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 yeah, but see, that suits you, mate. Oh, this, yeah. is, this is you down to a T. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> very prestigious. Yes. Very prestigious. Uh, and 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 so that that was that was the thing. I, I needed my target market is Gen Ys, mm. Gen X, Gen Ys, um, and I wanted something. That they could relate to yep. something that, uh, and as much as you know, I'm trying to actually uh, keep myself out of the out of the picture here as much as possible. Totally. So I want the business. I want people to know the business, yep. not me. Yep. I want people to call Stickman Wealth for help, not Berendel Force. Yep. Um, so, so as I keep that in mind with pretty much everything I do. Yep. Um, and so Stickman Wealth, where did that come from? So uh, Stickman is very simple and your finances should be very simple. Mm. Okay. So uh, it, it, there was a step before that. This is how I learned to build a business plan. All right. Yeah. So the head, the head is strategy, the body's marketing, the arms are your legal and accounting and yeah. your legs are your operations, right? And they all fit into this nice, simple, dynamic picture. Yeah. And a business plan should ultimately be very simple. Yes. Right. Um, and it's no different to your personal finances. Mm. I mean, your personal finances are ultimately just a, a miniature version of business. Totally. Right. And you should run your personal finances like a, a business. Totally. You should have a P and L. Yeah. You should have a balance sheet. Totally. You should have a cash flow statement for yourself. Mm. Um, and so, fundamentally, it's nothing different. So, the way that I looked at it was that the head is your cash flow. Mm. I was going to build a heart into the equation, but putting a heart on the stick man is just a little bit hard, but we'll, we'll get there, right? <laughs> but you can't have – your heart is your lifestyle. You can't have your mm. lifestyle without the cash flow. Right? Totally. Well, life choices and money choices and money choices are life choices. Totally. Exactly right. And it's a virtuous cycle or yeah. a vicious cycle. Yes, um, and virtuous. Uh, well, sorry, yeah. I was, yep, absolutely. <laughs> um, and uh, and so your arms are your your uh, superannuation and your risk and mm. your legs are your investments and, mm. they, and, and and that takes you to where you need to get to. And it should all form a very simple picture. Totally, man. We're a great name. 
And um, and so you launched three years ago. Yep. And talk to us about where you started, what you were thinking, what were your early challenges? Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, this it comes back to uh, I built a killer business plan mm. for this thing, right? Uh, and the difference between planning and execution. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going this way. I've built a great business plan, but it just never happens that way. Yeah, totally. So uh, I actually, having reflected upon the last couple of years, I've actually achieved the milestones that I've set that I've set out to achieve, um, but I've just not done it in the way that I planned to do it. Yeah. You know, um, some months are massive grinds. Some months you make great momentum. Um, I mean, the challenges straight off, off, off the back were I'm not a compliance guy, <laughs> right? right? So, you know, getting out there and I, I had these plans to go out and, and, you know, put great thought into my, um, into my branding and my marketing and I was going to go out and be this great marketing firm. Mm. Now, this is the one thing that I actually haven't done any of. <laughs> in the past two years, I've spent my entire time um, working on the back end, yeah. uh, the processes, uh, the underlying, the, you know, the operational doing. efficiencies of the business, all <laughs> yeah. that good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but but I'm, I'm happy to say that we're we're finally over the hump now. I've I've finally brought on board another another planner, awesome, man. who's a uh, ful- fulfillment planner, and um, he Ooh. will be looking after. All of that back end, <laughs> that's which allows me to come and awesome. do things like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because um, I know what it's like, you, 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 as a sole practitioner, as a new to the the business world, you, you need to attract clients. Yep. You need to uh, engage them. You need to uh, offer them something yep. that, that makes their life better, so they become a client. Then you need to execute uh, uh, repetitively. Yes, consistency. Yeah, consistent. Right. Yep. Then you need to do the whole thing. Yeah. And so it is an awkward moment when you, you you've got nothing left to implement, or you know, for for that week or that month, and you go, oh, I need to start again, and so. You, you initiate marketing 101, uh, attract, engage, provide value, and then implement. And then, of course, we get this uh, situation where it's super lumpy. Oh, very volatile. Super yep. lumpy. So, you, you know, you've got, you've got three coming through at once, and then you've got nothing for the yep. next month. And then, you know, you, you just... You ma- and what's weird about that is... You get all this cash coming through when you've got nothing going on. And you're like, ah, I'm living the dream. How good am I? <laughs> I don't even need to do any work. Book all your holidays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all this cash yeah. flows through. And then uh, and then it catches up onto you and, 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 and you're having to do all this work and then there's there's much less money around. You're like, oh, God. So yeah. You're just constantly chasing your tail. So that's interesting. What what Okay, what was the biggest issue that stopped you from organising this Say earlier than three years. Organizing the marketing, organizing or organizing my um, the new planner. Uh, organizing the new planner. Yeah. Uh, look, when you start out, you don't have a whole lot of cash flow. Correct. Right? So, as the, as the business owners here uh, would would understand, you probably go through a number of years, and you're not exactly paying yourself. Yeah. Right. Totally. Um, my new guys still earning more than I am right now. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that's a sacrifice that I had to make yeah. um, to alleviate that element of the business and totally. allow me to get on to do what I wanted to do. So yes. actually there's a, a, a great book that I read um, called The E-Myth by a gentleman called Michael Gerber. Yeah. And that really uh, crystallised for me uh, where I wanted to sit in the business. I already had an understanding but it's a very simple framework and the framework is – is within a business, you're either a, a technician, a manager, or an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, and as a business owner, you have to wear all of the hats, <clears throat> right? Um, and so as a financial planner, you, you're ultimately a technician. 
right? But when you go out to when you go out to run your own business, you've got to do accounting, you've got to do marketing, you've got to do operations, you've got to do you've got to do everything. Yeah. Um, and so the concept there is which hat do you want? Delegate, outsource, hire, yeah. resource yes. for the other roles. Um, and so uh, for me, the last couple of years has simply been getting the business to a scale where I could do that. Awesome, man. Well, first of all, congrats. Like, Thank that, you. That's a great position to get to. Um, did you know that there's an e-myth for financial planners? That's the name of the book. I didn't. Yeah, so I read the e-myth and then my mate who put me onto it was a financial planner. He goes, oh, by the way, there's actually a, an e-myth for financial planners. I was like, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> I should have read that one. Yeah. <laughs> but essentially, you, you know. Same concept. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. But instead of saying company A, they say financial planner. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's really not that much different. Um, and, of course, it's US-based, so it's, it's a little bit different there. Um have you done any? Did you did you use any transactional or, or quasi contracting uh, solutions with Upwork and, and outsourcing and things like that before you you were managed to bring on uh, your new planner? Yes, I did a little bit, mm. um, and but that was predominantly around. Uh, so I had a, a VA from the Philippines. Right. Yep. And uh, how was that? Did that work out for you? Yeah, she cool. she was great. Awesome. She was great. Um, look, it, it it one. I think it it comes down to the the concept is the same regardless of whether it's an internal employee or uh, someone overseas. It comes down to communication. Yes. It comes down to your ability to articulate step by step processes and train them up. All right, yeah. um, and set expectations as well. So uh, I didn't have her doing a whole lot of complex tasks. It was ultimately um, my bookkeeping, um, some commission statement reconciliations, yeah. just all of those things that took me hours mm. away from the business. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, the the uh, experience was really good. Awesome. Um, one thing, because I've been used. <laughs> Funnily enough, actually, I've never been to Latvia, but I got to Lithuania once. I went to Estonia and Lithuania, and we didn't get to Latvia. Or is it the other way around? Uh, which one has Riga? That's Latvia. Ah, so I've yeah. been to Latvia. <laughs> Funny story, uh, I used Upwork, which was known as um, Elancer back then, for the first yep. time when I was in Latvia. Really? I oh, there, there are heaps of contractors over there. Yeah, yeah. And, and for whatever reason, it was... It was snowing. I remember it was a gorgeous city and we're sitting and I saw all these, uh, these sort of, um, and even though I couldn't understand the language, it was, it was quite obvious that it, ha it was a sort of a digital and outsourcing style of culture. And I saw something for Elancer. Uh, so I was like, I'm just going to jump on and I'm hiring my very first person. I ne will never forget. I'm in this gorgeous Hotel, right? And, and because, you know, that part of the world, your bang for buck is outrageous, right? So um, we are one of the nicest hotels I've ever stayed in. And I'm on my phone, like, dealing with the, my first ever contractor. And I'll never forget Vero, who's my fiancé now. Uh, she was saying, what are you doing? Like, let's go. <laughs> let's go explore. And you just go on to <laughs> catch up for coffee with your, with your contractor. <laughs> I'm, like, organising all this stuff with the contractor. Oh, man. But anyway, um, so after five, six years of, of using that, um, I went through the phase originally of using, you know, your $5 per hour kind of, you know, yeah. and I went through that and then I jumped up to $20 an hour and I found some pretty good workers at $20 an hour. But I will say if you want to take outsourcing really seriously, it is to get the guys that are charging $75 US an hour. Um, especially for marketing, like marketing, such a big thing in marketing, like you, you, you can get someone, uh, to set up a very professional, uh, marketing, f uh, sort of with emails, with, you know, how it's done everything for like literally a couple of thousand bucks. And once that's set up, it's just constantly dripping clients in, into your, into your field, mm. which is. Which is amazing. I'm a, the longer I've been using um, Upwork for, the more of a fan. It's, we we wouldn't be able to operate without. Oh my my new business wouldn't operate without Upwork. Uh, XY Advisor wouldn't be able to operate without 
Oh, no, we've got M. Sorry, M. M. She could probably do everything now. But, <laughs> <laughs> great, great researcher as well. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's getting pulling yourself from working, as which was your point and the whole point of the e-myth, uh, from working on the business mm. and working in the business. So you see yourself... The old cliche. Yeah, but, but you, you know. see yourself definitely as the person that should be working uh, on the uh, business. Absolutely. And, and just to add on to what you were saying about the, um, the e-work, the contractors um, or outsourcers, uh, you've got to get creative, mm. right? You've got to spend time getting creative about the things that you can actually send across to them because you can actually send a lot more across to them than you think you can. You've yeah. just got to get a little bit creative around how you do it, the technology that they might use to enable you to do that. Um, you know, if you need spreadsheets built or things like that. So recently I, I needed a spreadsheet done um, that was going to, I could have done it, yes, but it was going to take me three to four hours to do it, right? I put it on there for $5. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and a guy just built it in, you know, he built it in probably like 15 minutes. So if, if that. Yeah. But it's just taking a step back at every juncture and going, okay, do I need to be doing this or can I actually outsource this? Absolutely. You know, and then take, Take the time, take five minutes to actually outsource it. Yeah, you know, and these pe- they, uh, these people, um, I, I have responses within thirty seconds to a minute of of um, putting a job ad up. Totally, man. It's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, no, no, it's it's phenomenal. Um, something that us at XY we've been dealing with a little bit lately is a, a data scientist, and um, uh, that's some amazing stuff, right? So. You can give, if you were to get a bunch of data from your business around, you know, obviously no, um, no, no data that shows specifics, right? So there's privacy issues around don't attach names Mm -hmm. to, to, you know, whatever it is that you want to find out. But uh, at XY, we we collect a little bit of data, but we will be uh, collecting a lot more in order to provide people with personalized reports. That's just something that we're building out at the moment. Um, and 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 a data scientist can give you outrageous insights into your business, which then, once you've got that, you can shoot it across to a marketing guy who can build it into a, an infographic. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so literally with, you know, say uh, half an hour of your time, you can say, hey, I want these insights in my business data scientist. And they get, and they go away for a couple of days or whatever and come back and it costs you 50, 100 bucks, maybe 200 bucks. Maybe like, call it 500 bucks, right? To get all these cool insights. And then you read it and then because they're scientists and they go into a lot of detail, you can probably shorten it down a little bit. So what, you put a half an hour of work in there. Uh, and then you flick it across to a good graphic guy. Uh, it, you literally write as your uh, job description, need infographic created from data analytic insights or whatever. And you shoot it up there. And one thing that I like to do, so here's a really cool trick, um, is to get them, is to get uh, literally in your job description, say uh, to apply for this job, I would like you to perform a part of the job. So mm. you don't have to do the whole thing. Um, but let's say take the first two points or whatever that I want in this infographic and show me what it is that it's going to look like. You know, if someone's a specialist at that, they're going to, it's going to take them five, 10 minutes, you know, um, and essentially it's them applying for the job. Yep. And, uh, and you can't use it, right? Because it's just a, such a small fraction of what you want done. Um, and I found that 99% of people, not everyone, some, some, some people don't do it and that's fine. Okay. But that is one of the coolest little tricks that Mm. I've learned is to get them to do what it is you want, just a very small version of it. And then it's very easy to pick the best guys. Cause if you say, make me a short video based on this and you randomly just pick someone, um, I've had enough bad experiences to know that that is not a, a, a good way to choose someone. But if you say, do 15 seconds or 10 seconds, show me what it's going to look like, then you can really pick who's just there getting as many jobs as possible in any field possible and who's actually there to do a good job. It's a good point because it's just like a resume, right? You know, everyone can refine their resume, you yeah. get other people to vet it, and yeah. then it goes up on their, their, their profile. So 
actually getting them to show you a piece of work that they've done or yeah. actually actually do a piece of the work yeah. for you, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously it gives you that that um, that clarity into, Man, it's into such what a cool it is that, trip, it, into what it is that they do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, really cool. Mm. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so you, you've got obviously these um, classic challenges of starting a business. Yep. Talk to us about where your company has gone over the last sort of three years since its inception. Yep. So since inception, uh, first year, first year actually had the wobbles a little bit. <laughs> actually, <laughs> I don't like to talk about this openly, <laughs> but hey, let's do it while we're here. Exactly. <laughs> I actually questioned whether I wanted to be in financial planning, and yeah. I had another opportunity come up to to uh, to build a fund. Um, so I started working on that with a, with another gentleman um, out of the US, and it uh, it was <laughs> going well for about eight months, um, but. Look, I, I won't elaborate on what on what that was, but it took a lot of my time and focus away from what it was that I was doing. And I'd, I, I, I sat down one day and actually, look, it was all exciting, but was it going to happen? Um, I had I had to come to Jesus moment, mm. and I had to sit back and go, okay, realistically, where am I going? What am I doing? You know, I've put so much time and effort. I went back to basics with getting into financial planning. The ultimate goal was always to get into my own business. I'm here now. I've done it. I've been here for three months and now I'm looking outside the square. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I called it a day on, on that opportunity. Yeah. Um, and so that put me back, you know, six months. I was still working on it, but it put me back quite a bit. Um but the first, so the first twelve months of fully working in the business was spent on the back end, on the operational efficiencies of the business. Yeah. You know, getting my processes down, getting my bid paperwork down, getting my fact finds down, getting getting all of that done. Um, and to be honest, very little of it was actually spent on the client. Um, so where I'm at right now is it's all about that client engagement piece. Mm. Now this might seem obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but but it it it's it's amazing that when you're running your own business you get caught up in the running of the business. Totally. You get caught up in the business and 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 as much as you want to do the other stuff you get caught up in in the minutia. So uh now it's it's about okay, how do I provide a great client experience? And it's not What's funny is that I used to think about the operational efficiencies of the business and on the other end of the scale is marketing. And w there's actually a big component in the middle which is simply, uh, and you were uh, elaborating on this before, which is simply your everyday engagement with your client, that consistency, that mm. relationship that you've built. You know, mm. So you, you are the value proposition as a financial planner and it's your capacity to be able to build a relationship with people. Yes. Um, and so so that's first and foremost. Then second is providing those clients with a consistent experience. Definitely. <laughs> then on top of that, it's about how do you delight your clients? Mm. And I'd like to throw it out to everyone um, who's listening, you know, BDMs, client service people, power planners, you know, if, you're, if you've got any form, you know, we've all got clients of some sort, whether they're internal or external. Yes. Um, what is it that you do yourself um, that might be a little bit different that you do to actually delight your clients? You know, whether it's it's just adding that little, um, you know, it's a, it's a special message on their birthday, whether it's adding a little note on each email, or whether it's, you know, I am just available 24 hours a day for this, for, for my clients. Oh, you never that want that to be your uh, no, proposition. No, you don't. I agree. But well, I'm I, just, I fell into that yep. when I first started. Yep. It's horrible. And it, then just take a step back from that. Yeah. Oh, everyone's like, wait a second, mate. It's 2 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Yeah. yeah. You're meant to be at my disposal. I'm like, oh, yeah, it was, wasn't I? Yeah, actually, it, it's it's a it's a fine line that one because uh, there, 
uh, is a BDM um, uh, for an insurance company who's, uh, in fact, there are a few. There are some great BDMs out there. Like, I, yeah. I, I'd shout out to, 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 to all the BDMs. I, I'm not going to name names, but <laughs> you, there are a lot of you guys that are just phenomenal. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I send off an email for a re-quote or something like that at like 8 o'clock at night and, and I don't expect... Because I don't do this with my clients either. Look, you know, I if it's something urgent that comes up yep. and they need a response right now, yep. absolutely. Mm. But otherwise, can it wait till morning? Yeah. Yeah, it's a- 95% of the time, 99% of the time, it can wait. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I got a quote back an hour and a half later Dude. and I'm like, you know, my email back was, look, as much as I love this, <laughs> you... Don't have to do it. Oh, absolutely. You really don't have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and if people expect you to be on call 24 hours a day, then I, I think... It's unreasonable. It is very unreasonable. I, I don't even yep. check my emails after 5 p.m. No. That, that's, yep. like, that's, a, that's a rule that I've got because I just... I don't want to think about work after... I, I do anyway. Yeah. So... If I can do anything to not think about work, I will take yeah. advantage of it. Well, that's an interesting point, actually, about not checking emails. Um, you know, we're, we're, every day is a learning experience, right? It's it's about how do I get better at what I do? Yeah. How do I get more productive? How yeah. do I fit? So, look, my uh, just take a quick back step. So, with Stickman Wealth, it is about simplicity. It's about, but I've got a tagline which is um, for a life that's rich, mm. right? Um, and having gone through the business planning process, you know, you, you, you go, you reflect upon your own value system yeah. um, and you try and reflect that into the business. And so for me, life is about balance. Totally. Right? It's about travel. It's about experiences. It's about friends. It's about money allowing me to do all the things that I want to do. It's not just about money, mm. um, which is where I think a lot of the uh, XY advisor group is, is pushing their Correct. client base because it's not about money. Uh, yeah, at the end yeah, of the day, yeah. it's, it's just not. It's an enabler. Totally. Right? So um, so for me, I have to live that in my own business mm. as well. And that means that from, you know, from nine to five, I'm working. It's game on. Right? Yeah. But after five, it's time for me to go home, spend time with my family. Yeah. Walk my dog, yeah. and uh, and do the things that I love. Um, and so it's... It, it, Email is one of those great things that if you've got push notifications on, they come no, through. It's be, always like bing, bing, bing. Um, you got to can you know, that. Absolutely. Not, not you, but like if anyone's listening and still is uh, is getting notifications on email, can that immediately? Yeah. Also, can voicemail. Now, um, there's a. This isn't just my opinion. You could just Google this. Google, Google Coca Cola voicemail, and they did a massive study on this. And voicemail is just so redundant. If if someone calls you and leaves you a voicemail, they and but let's say you don't have voicemail set up, they will call you back if it's urgent. If not, they'll send you an email. In which case, it can wait uh, until you check your email next. It's crazy. People live on voicemail and email notifications. That uh, I, I mean, in 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 the book that I wrote, that is a major contributor to decision fatigue. Infinitely, and it's going to reduce your ability in every area. Well, you're right. Decision fatigue. You know, when you're trying to, when you're trying to, it, it at the end of the day, it's about simplicity. Yeah. Right. It, it's about getting rid of the noise. Yeah. Uh, so anything you can do to get rid of the noise, uh, you know, it, it alerts on your phone, news alerts, anything. You <laughs> totally. know what? Just put your phone in the drawer. Totally. Li- literally, um, and then have set times throughout the day where you, uh, okay, look. I've got an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon where I check my phone, I make my calls, I check my email, yep. and then you shut it off and you get on with the other productive tasks of the day. Yes. Otherwise, you are just forever reactive. Um, and, I, yeah, I think um, reading a book the other day, um, name escapes me, but every time you get distracted, it takes – somewhere between a minute and a minute and a half, I think it is, to it's actually more. bring your focus I back. I think it's even more than that. Yeah. I, 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 I remember I th- something along the lines of like five minutes. Yeah, I think it depends on the level or the depth of the task sure. that you're actually doing at the time. Yeah. But if you're in deep thought and you're doing something quite strategic and creative, hearing your phone go off in the background just, yeah, it, it distracts you, it 
it, it, it disrupts your thought process. Absolutely. And, uh, and so, you know, look, I, I, I'm, I'm saying all this stuff. I'm nowhere near perfect. Oh, right? absolutely. Uh, but it's just trying to build the discipline into my day. Man, that, there's a reason why uh, in Silicon Valley there was uh, what was originally used as a narcolepsy uh, drug. It's called modafinil. Mm -hmm. Modafinil is, um, I would call it a, a, a chemically induced flow. So you know when you get into the flow where you're not distracted at all. Um, so uh, Silicon Valley was massive, massive on, on modafinil, still is. So it's 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 something that um, has no known side effects. So it became really popular. Um, the guy that has built uh, the Bulletproof Coffee uh, uh, company, he used to have it on his LinkedIn. He's mm. like, I take modafinil every single day and have for the last seven years. And he did the Bulletproof Coffee after he sold like this $700 million business or whatever it was, $300 million business. I can't remember. Hundreds of millions of dollars business. And this guy was such a massive a proponent of it. But then you get guys like Tim Ferriss who are like, well, if you're getting biological advantages without – uh, like, like it, it needs to, you need to have a, a deficiency somewhere. And so it, it's certainly not that um, everyone should go out and do it. But I think the fact that that became so popular and is so popular is a direct result of our inability to focus. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and and it's that, just that, that uh, people need to take a, a drug developed for narcolepsy. Yeah, to offset our now uh, pleasure and reward systems to check our phone every every thirteen seconds. Oh, we, the average time between checking emails for people is eighteen minutes. Mm. Yeah. What the Hell. Yeah, we, we check our phones. So, oh, so, so, it's, it's, it's something like a hundred hundred yeah. times an hour. <laughs> what? Yeah, something like that, right? I mean, what is going on? What is going on? Yeah, but I mean, it, you know, if you have to start taking chemical uh, agents in order to improve your yeah. your day to day, it's a bad sign. And having done the MBA, I um, I am familiar. Um, yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah. Been there. I've, I've got I've, no I've, doubt. I've tried it. I, um, I, I learned about it through medical students yeah, and lawyers. Yeah. I was like, "What is all of this?" Yeah, but you realize it's uh, it's no. It, at the end of the day, it's no different to caffeine, alcohol. Yeah. Um, you know, drugs. It, it's they they alter your state. Yes. Ultimately, right? Mm. Um, it, they don't fix the problem. They alter your state to allow you to cope with whatever it is that you that that. Totally. That is happening in front of you, yeah, yeah. and so that's where you know uh, you've got to put in in place strategies to actually reduce yeah. the noise as opposed to cope with it. Absolutely, yeah. and and we like modern day life, man, is just literally we all just give up and we're just we, pretty. I, I yeah, yeah you, you're plate. you're a passenger, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Coffee in the morning, yeah. alcohol at yeah. night. It's just like there's there's no real uh, deviation. <laughs> Uh, deviation from that, which sucks, you know. Uh, I mean, obviously, I could uh, do infinitely better. But um, uh, the client experience yep. that you're now trying to develop, um, what does what does a perfect client experience look like nowadays? What does it look like? I, I can't answer what a perfect client experience looks like. Yeah. It's Ooh, something that I'm developing. But I'll elaborate like? on where I'm going and, where, mm. and, and what we're doing. So, look, it's, it's about one um, – Again, it's not about finances anymore. It's about how do I get involved in, and this is where you came from straight off 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 the bat, right? It's the it's the goal piece. It's the why. Mm. Okay, the old Simon Sinek. Let's start with why, mm. right? Um, I need to understand your why so that I can help you achieve all of those whys in your life, not yeah. just make your super work hard for you and make sure that you've got a plan B in place. That's such a good okay. line. Let's make your super work hard for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Use that all, was your value all the problem. time, man. All the time. Um, <laughs> but you know, so understanding the why, understanding the why allows us to engage with them more effectively because we've got reasons to contact them. Yeah. Okay. It's not just picking up the phone, going, "Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Did you get my newsletter? Get my newsletter. Did you see your, the performance? Did you get, Sha Did you get Shane Oliver's uh, <laughs> economic update? <laughs> you know, it, it 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 gives you that excuse to build that. More, a more effective relationship with them uh, yeah, yeah, ongoing yeah. and understand exactly what does drive them as opposed to your perception of what drives them. So mm -hmm. it's all about building that. How do I, how do I um, build, how do I build a more effective relationship with my client? Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, these are all generic questions that, that, that we're all trying to figure out, but 
um, you know, I'm really starting from the beginning again with this whole thing. Yeah, man. Uh, so, you know, it's not about clients. Mm. Uh, clients. It is about clients. It's mm. not about uh, emails. It's not yep. about newsletters. Yep. It's not about um, marketing uh, per se. I think that all comes into the equation. Uh, but how do I build the, a more effective relationship? So I've got myself as a value proposition yep. or – and my next challenge is how do I build the business as the value proposition, not myself as the value proposition? Mm. Um, I want people calling the business saying, how can you help me? Not Baron, how can you help me? Mm. Um, so that's challenge number one. Challenge number two is consistency. Consistency is quite hard. Totally. Providing a consistent experience to your clients is actually extremely hard. Yes. Right? And then on top of that, it's the how do we go the step above and how do we delight? Um, which is, so it's a big mandate, and 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 this is and this is I'm I'm really only at the beginning of this journey right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, the more I can do it, obviously, the better the business will be. And actually, what what I've found um, is since having Greg on board um, and taking over a lot of that back end, by virtue of having him on board, it's taken a burden off my shoulders, which has released up mental capacity. And you know what? By simply releasing up mental capacity, um, the the vibes have gone out to the universe. The neurons are firing. The neurons are firing. Yeah, man. And the vibe is out there. And <laughs> I've just started getting referrals. Dude, that's it's, so it, awesome. It's so weird. It is so weird. But, you know, um, so it, it's having that capacity as well. So reducing the noise, having the capacity to actually go out and focus on one thing. Yeah. You know, what part do you want to play in the business? For me, it's about... Ultimately, being that that entrepreneur, yep. uh, maybe managerial element. Yes. Um, but so I've gotten, I've I've now largely gotten rid of the technician element. Cool. Um, and and it will allow me to move on to those other two. Facebook groups. Have you considered starting one? Have I considered starting one? Yeah. Look, I, I to think be it's honest, I, I, I don't know. I don't know where to start. I, I, that, the, it's it's on the agenda, but I don't know where to start. Yeah. So um, I started one uh, for the book. Uh, going back, you know, maybe two years ago. <clears throat> and then the I, I, I did a bunch of training on how to build this Facebook group and yada, 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 yada. Yep. And I learned heaps of cool stuff and then failed on execution. And the yeah. reason why I failed on execution was because uh, I made the group explicitly about me adding value to the group. Yeah. And then as soon as you put yourself up to be a guru – then people are a little bit skittish. They're like, "Oh, yeah," and it, and they and they want? expect and they expect yeah. you to be the guru on <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, X Y advisors obviously a lot easier to do because we're not the experts; we're the enthusiasts. And so there, there's, um, I think that works really well in that environment. Yeah. Um, then you've got so, so it's almost like I, the first group I built was uh, look at me. Uh, the second group that I was part of building, it was uh, look at us. Yep. Uh, and, and it's almost, you know, look at everyone individually. And, and XY Advisor is more about what everyone else is writing rather than what any particular It's such a collaborative writing. effort. I mean, you, got, you yep. guys have done amazing things for, it's been for, so for, for the industry. Oh, it, it's, <clears throat> it, it really has revolutionized things. Thanks, man. And, and look, it, and as long as we... Our, our whole philosophy has been if we're wasting people's time, we'll just stop, including our own. And we haven't wasted, or well, maybe not much of people's time, but we, it looks to be more positive than negative. Well, look, I mean, people are joining, mm. people are contributing, yeah. and as long as people want to keep contributing, you're adding value. Man, uh, like yesterday was our first day that we've ever had 1,100 people on there at the same time. So there's almost 1,700 people in the group, but... That's, that's such a high percentage of people that are within a 24 hour people within a 24 hour period which is a lot obviously but where I was going to with this is uh, we interviewed Adele Adele Martin uh, and she did a, an amazing uh, podcast not too long ago but in there she talks about she's got a, a money maker uh, group yep and um, she she's the she's the guru but um, she actually, it's not so much her just going on and doing videos and whatnot, what I was trying to do, mm. which was sort of this one way, 
One Way Street, uh, which was this sort of look at me. Um, and it's not this sort of total collaborative, everyone is just there to, uh, and then the only role that we play is sort of to moderate. Yep. She sort of has done, and I think she's done a really good job, and I can see other advisors that are now adopting this. It's almost halfway where she is, she's, um, I guess, the person that the group is about, but it's it's very collaborative in that she's, she's just a, a facilitator. Questions. She facilitates and yeah. educates, yeah. whereas I was, I guess you could call it dictating. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and then over here it was just pure collaboration. She's she's done a really good job of uh, halfway in between, and I know for a fact that other financial planners are doing this. And why I think it's good is because, um, like, let's say for example, six p.m. every Wednesday, you jumped on and answered questions that you received in emails through the week. So instead of going back and emailing these people every time. Yeah. Um, that, man, like you, you, as a financial advisor, you get so many questions that you could make that the weekly Q&A and do it live, but it doesn't yep. really matter if it's live or not. And then off the back, as long as you're asking questions yeah. and then giving people sort of homework and basically what I'm saying is uh, as far as engagement process goes, like – Facebook is such a good environment because of what we talked about before. The pleasure centers are already wired for enjoyment. So you're not having to build any tech from scratch. Literally, you just go and press create group. And if you can't even find that button, just Google. Man, I've got to, re I gotta reinstall Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the downside. Yeah, so I was off Facebook. Yep. And then had to jump back on again. Well, that's, and, and, like, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm off I'm off Facebook. Yeah. But um, it's interesting. Uh, you just hit the nail on the head with something you said. Then was it's about the questions you ask, right? Mm. So this is this is the difference between that dictating and mm. collaborating or yes. facilitating. Is that you should be a question asker. Yes. And ultimately, this is a funny thing that you learn in sales is that the power of a sale is not in telling someone about how good your product is. Totally. It's about the quality of the questions you ask, yes. and then the person actually. Um, identifies for themselves the yes. problem, all right, and then you just happen to be in a position yeah. where you can help ideally, them. ideally, yeah, yeah, um, and and so it, I think it's just following the same concepts, but you know the, um, you know uh, the, it's the medium that you use uh, and can you do it very well, and that's something that yeah that I have to learn how to do. Man, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you get an open rate on emails of about twenty percent, yep. right, and then you get as I said. Uh, you know, over 50 or 60 percent of the group uh, of the people in the group in the Facebook group go on there every day. Yep. Uh, I think it's 85 percent go on every week, 90 percent go on every month, and 95 percent go on every two months. So, if you look at 95 percent compared to 20 percent on engagement, um, there's really Facebook groups is where a, an easy way to assist with this ongoing, consistent client journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh, it, a part of my other challenge is, yes, I set out to serve the XY mm. segment, mm. right? And the Facebook group, uh, have you found, uh, look, it, it may be all generations who actually jump onto the Facebook group. Definitely. But I, I, from my understanding or my my general level of knowledge, it would be the younger the younger generation who would engage more with that Facebook side of things. Definitely. Um, you know, this is my challenge now is that you ultimately want to niche down Definitely. Um, into into a market. And I'm still at a point where I'm getting referrals from retirees, I'm getting referrals from millennials mm. And, mm. And, uh, and, and everything in between. Yeah. Um, and so I really don't have any segmentation at the moment. I haven't, yep. I haven't niched down. Yep. Um, you know, I think that will come over time yep. uh, as we start specialising in, in elements. Um, but then the next question is, do I actually want to? Definitely you do. Absolutely. And, and, and so I, I did the uh, Key Person of Influence course. It cost about $15,000, totally worth doing. In there they talk about um, uh, your target is not your market, right? And it's a really weird concept, but basically if there's two <clears throat> physiotherapists right here, there's two doors and they're both advertised, and one says um, physio for office workers, 
right? Or, or not even something less or more generic. Physio for everyday people. Mm. And the next door says physio for uh, world class athletes, right? You're going to stand there and you're like, well, I'm an everyday person, but I want the guy <laughs> that deals with the world class athletes. Yeah, fair enough. Right? Yep. Yep. And the interesting thing about <clears throat> niching is that it's not you you miss out on clients it's the, it works opposite you almost uh, if you put your sort of your delivery up here then everyone below that delivery level wants to reach up it's a weird weird conundrum and so not only do you get the world class athletes cuz they walk up and they're like well that's me <laughs> you get the everyday people go well, actually, well, I think you, I you, want that guy. you're talking about niching within a niche here. <coughs> so it's even, you know, I'm not, it's not if I if 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 I put myself out there as a financial advisor for high net worth individuals, mm. right? Everyone wants to step up into a high net worth individual space. Yes. Well, sorry, let me take that back. Inverted commas, everyone. Yes, 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 um, yes. right. <coughs> but and high net worth means everything different. It, to everyone it, else. Look, and, and high net worth, you know, in 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 the terms that we're talking. We're talking holistically in life, right? Totally. So, totally. Of, of course, not just financially. Uh, but, uh, you, yeah, I, I, look, I, 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 get, I get exactly what you're saying. It, so, for example, you've got your I am a physio and I cater towards elite athletes versus this other segment or office workers. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to to articulate where my headspace is going right now. Yeah, but it, um, yeah, I, I know, I know exactly what you're saying. So, uh, in the end, my business, even though I never advertised it as this, my speciality, I actually ended up working uh, when I was financial planning uh, with people in the finance industry. They ended up being my clients uh, purely by referral, actually. And I had this really weird subsect of referrals, which was. Uh, People who were high up in Macau casinos, but that's a story for another time. Is it, <laughs> is it a story for another time? <laughs> Definitely. That was weird. Um, but besides that weird little uh, subsect, um, I was dealing with Gen X, Gen Y, who worked in the finance industry. And what I should have done if I was sticking around in the industry, I would have said financial advisor to the finance industry. Yeah. On, on Good my point. LinkedIn. Uh, on everything that I did. I should have done that because, um, A, it was true, so that helped. But B, I mean, it's walking up and do I want the financial planner for everyday, for everyday Australians or do I want the financial planner for the guy that works with people in the finance industry that would know better? Yeah. And so I think when you're talking about niching, high net wealth or high net worth is, um, is, is probably too broad. Exactly. <clears throat> so... You know, saying things like uh, "I work with professional sports people." If you do, um, then that then that works because probably you know people in the entertainment industry are probably more likely to work with you as well. And the, but the concept is the uh, because of uh, because of digital marketing, you can have a two inch wide target market, so very very narrow who you're aiming for. But because you know, uh, Australia wide, there's actually heaps of people in that that you can now target very accurately via, say, Facebook uh, marketing. Um, not only will you get your ideal client, but you will get those that are th that that are out of your target market as well. Mm. So that's not my knowledge. That is completely a uh, key person of influence. Um, but I tell you, it is. I think a very smart decision. Yeah, uh, to any to, business that to, you to niche. Do it. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And I don't, I don't disagree with you yeah. at all, at all. It's now just about finding that. Yeah. Who, who, and where, and what do I want? Do I actually want to target? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, because you go in, you go in initially, and I think this is what you were saying before: was you go out initially, and you're like, I'm the financial advisor for the X Y market. Yes. Right. Who isn't? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who isn't? Um, <laughs> so, it, so yeah. Now it's it. Now it's about. Um, it's then just niching. Mm. It's then about okay, well, and how do you niche? Mm. Yeah, you know, because it, it's like, well, I'd like to be a financial advisor to the financial services industry. Uh, uh, industry yeah, right. But you seem to just find yourself going down that route. So mm. you know, it's a fine line between 
um, what you'd like to do and what actually ends up happening. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. It, it's. I'm curious as to how. Well, I've got to figure out as to how I go about my marketing mm. to keep it broad enough. No, go but, go direct. But niche enough. But niche enough to go. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm choosing a subsector here. Yes. It might cover a couple of things, or like you just said, do I just go? You know, health leather on one. Yes. And definitely. Okay. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, uh, 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 and and um, either that, or 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 pay the fifteen grand and KPI or do KPI. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I hear good things, mate. Yeah, well, I've done it. Ben's done it. Phil's done it. Uh, Backy's doing it. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a handful of people that have done it, and they'll probably all tell it. Uh, Peter's done it. Yeah, some titties. Um, mate, well, this has been great. Uh, Are we finished? We, uh, well, man, I could talk all day. What's the time? It is. 20 past. 20 past 10. Okay. Yeah, we should we should wrap up. Yeah, well, the next guest is uh, going to be bashing down the door. Oh, okay. Relatively short. Bring him in. Uh, Let's get some espresso <laughs> martinis happening in here. <laughs> Mate, so, uh, so let, we, uh, last couple of minutes, let's share anything that you would really like to talk to people about specifically. Do you have a message? Is there anything that you would like people to go find out about you or is there something you'd like to collaborate on or... Yeah, look, I'd just, uh, again, just reiterate uh, what I was saying before, uh, reach out to to your audience and find out what you do special for your clients. Mm-mm. BDMs, power planners, client services, financial planners, anyone. Yep. Um, you know, what? It, what's your secret? Yeah. Yeah, what, uh, if you're willing to share it, that is. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe we can compile a list and, and share it. Yep. Um, you know, uh, that would be that would be absolutely brilliant. So, otherwise, if you would like to get in contact with me, my email address is hello at stickmanwealth.com.au. I'd love to hear. Uh, you know, if you want to shoot me any of these tips directly, that's fine too. Um, and love to catch up for a coffee. Um, you know, and network and get out and and uh, and meet as many people as I can. Awesome, man. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, well, I think you had a really cool journey. Um, I'm interested to see how it uh, unfolds for you, mate. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Very welcome. Thank you. Bye.